Hey guys, Trevor Jacuti here from SpineWise and I want to talk to you about something you may not have heard about today and that is a valve called your ileocecal valve. And if you're someone who has pelvic problems, back pain, maybe foot problems, SIBO or other digestive issues, then you really need to listen to this video. Uh, if you're loving our content, loving our material, please like our page, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's the easiest way we can keep you informed and up to date with all the information that you want to receive. All right, so let's talk about this thing called the ileocecal valve. Let's start with what it actually is. So uh, between our small and our large intestine, we have a barrier that needs to be formed. And this is a really, really important barrier. There's a whole lot of good and bad things that live in our intestinal tract. Uh, and they are different between our small bowel and our large bowel, our small intestine and our large intestine, and they do different things. They're responsible for different aspects. And likewise, even when we talk about the food that's in our small intestine compared to our large intestine, it's having different things done to it as well. So we need to be able to compartmentalize these areas and that the um, job of compartmentalizing them is done by our ileocecal valve, a small valve that sits between the ileum and your cecum, which is the first part of your large intestine. All right, so this valve, more or less, what it's basically doing is as uh, food is passing through our small intestine, it gets to this valve, the valve opens up, it moves into the large intestine and it closes over again, and that stops things from going back into your small intestine. And it's really, really important because large intestine bacteria is very, very different to small intestine bacteria. So we need to make sure that we keep them separate at all times. So it really is involved in regulation. And the big things with this, what it's really doing, it helps regulate our probiotic count. So we have certain bacteria such as bifidobacterium that's more prolific in our large intestine where things like acidophilus are more prolific in our small intestine. It also helps to control parasitic growth. Uh, and keeping them apart from different areas. Uh, and also, as we said before, controlling fecal movement so the stuff that's going out doesn't get back into the system and get absorbed where we don't want it to be. So really, really critical uh, importance in that valve. Um, one of the big things we see in regards to structure though, um, is that it's been observed here that uh, when the ileocecal valve goes uh, crazy or becomes dysfunctional, it tends to somehow or another affect the iliacus muscle. Now your iliacus muscle is a big muscle that sits on the front edge of your pelvis and holds your pelvis together, stops it from falling apart and coming apart. So when we get dysfunction of that muscle, we tend to get a foot that turns out, we get a knee that drops in, um, and we get extra stress on our sacroiliac joints. Uh, and the result for a lot of people is a lot of different structural problems as well. A really common cause of back pain that seems to be undiagnosed in a lot of people from we, what we've seen here. So what are the things that are commonly linked to, to, um, to this ileocecal valve dysfunction? Well, if you've got SIBO, there's a good chance you have ileocecal problems. Um, so we know that the ileocecal valve is one of the valves in the gut which is also under vagus control, vagal nerve control, just like many other valves. Uh, and we know SIBO is associated with vagal problems. And SIBO basically is small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So if we're having problems with the ileocecal valve, our uh, large intestine bacteria move into our small intestine bacteria as well. And it's one of the things that's believed to be contributing to what SIBO actually is. So really important for that. Uh, dysbiosis, in other words, we're getting an imbalance of good healthy bacteria within the digestive system. Tons of different digestive issues are associated with uh, ileocecal valve changes. Back pain, a really common one that we've seen here because of that ileocecal problem. Um, and sometimes even pelvic floor problems, bladder issues we've observed here as well being associated with it. Uh, and foot problems. So if we have changed that iliacus, foot turns out. As the foot turns out, we drop in and we get what we call subtalar pronation. Uh, and that can also lead to issues with knees as well and things like that. So really common link to the iliacus, which is often not the only cause, but one of the common causes of it is valvular dysfunction. So what can we do about it? Okay, well the basic, well, the easiest one to just start with is start doing some vagal exercises. We've done tons of uh, videos on vagal exercises and what you can do. You can jump onto our YouTube channel or hop onto our Facebook page and, and look up that and you can have a look through that. We'll put some links below to the vagal stuff as well so you can have a read through it. Um, the other aspect with it as well is um, uh, diet seems to play a really big part of it, especially if you have a high carbohydrate based diet. These are the people that we tend to see more ileocecal valve issues with. 
The other one that seems, we seem to see a lot of triggers with is rapid changes in barometric pressure. So sometimes flying, huge changes in weather going from high barometric pressure to low back to high like we see in Melbourne in spring and, and autumn. Uh, so common um, patterns for it as well, which we can't really do too much about. Uh, but what we do uh, see is that things like seeds and nuts, including their oil, so things like flaxseed oil, sesame seeds, a hazelnut, these type of things often aggravate the valve when it's trying to re-establish itself and try and recover. Starch, such as what you find in your potatoes, seems to be an aggravator as well. Uh, raw fruit, raw veggies and salads also seems to be an aggravator as well uh, as that valve is trying to recover. Uh, so, you know, having them cooked, stewed, tinned, all these things, uh, where they may not, may not necessarily be the right, um, uh, the right way to, to consume it for you, uh, staying off them for a few days can often help this valve reset itself once you've put things in motion to correct it. Anyway guys, that's a quick little introduction into the ileocecal valve uh, and the role that it plays in your health. If you do have any questions or you have any of those issues and you just want to get some advice, um, uh, please feel free to message me, uh, send me a PM or DM, I'm happy to do that. Uh, otherwise, post up below that's me and more than happy to get some information and get my team to have a chat to you about what you might be able to do to get back on track. Anyway guys, that's it for me for now. Have a fantastic week and uh, we'll see you in the next vid. Bye for now.